Well, hello. I'm doing something a little bit stupid this month, which is trying to read 30 books in 30 days. Um, I've seen this challenge go around on a couple of different people's channels and I just thought it's really fun. I don't know why I decided I'd do it in July because I have actually quite a lot of stuff going on. And um, although we're obviously all at home at the moment, um, Will and I are both working like full time from home. So I don't have that much time. I don't know why I thought a book a day was a really good idea, but you know, I've committed to it now, so we're gonna we're gonna try it out. So I've put down any reading that I was doing before today, and I'm starting from scratch on the 1st of July, and I'm gonna see exactly if how many books I can read basically in July. Um, hopefully, it will be 30, but we're gonna we'll, we'll find out. I've obviously prioritised some reasonably short books and novellas, and I've also got some audiobooks on the go um, as well at the same time. So. We'll, we'll try. I was previously listening to Black and British by David Osoga, which is a brilliant um, history book. And what I found is that while we're working from home, I actually listen to it a lot while I'm like cooking dinner or even when I'm making lunch. So Will and I tend to have lunch like separately, like we put our headphones on and watch something or listen to something because we're obviously together the whole time. So I've decided to figuratively put that down and I'll pick that up again after in, in August. And I've started listening to today, um, Isabella, She Wolf of, of France by, uh, by Alison Weir. And Isabella, Queen Isabella was the wife of Edward II. And I really want to learn a little bit more about the Plantagenets and like that part of English history. Because we, I didn't learn very much about that at school. But so far, I'm quite enjoying this. I prefer history, I think, when it's focused on like a, a specific person or like characters, you know? Um, so I've been listening to that today, just starting to get into it. And the physical book I've picked up today is The Private Joys of Nina Maloney, which I am I have just started. And um, yeah, getting through it quite quickly. This won the Desmond Elliott Prize. Um, so it's been on my on my list that I want to read since then. And this was kindly sent to me by Dialogue Books um, in Little Brown. So I'm very excited to read a little bit more of this. I've just kind of been introduced to Nina and her mum and you saw her mum meet her dad at university and now it's just like introducing them in their lives now and the characters now. So I will see how this unfolds. I have just <laughs> poured myself on reflection a rather large glass of wine. Um, will is next door doing like a virtual pub with his friends, which he normally does um, once a week. And I'm uh, enjoying some wine. Uh, you come to, in, to in, enjoy I wine? I came for some brandy, but uh, I forgot that you'd open that wine. <laughs> you know, I don't feel so bad drinking my massive wine when you've got, like, you're on the hard stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been a hard day's work, so. Yeah. Fair play. Becoming alcoholics in lockdown. So give me a cheers. Yay! Oh, that was just off screen. That's really oh, nice. was it? Yeah, only oh, just. I it was on <laughs> Good sound. Too late, we can't Good do sound. it again. It'd be disingenuous. So it's Friday morning now and I just thought I'd check in. I finished Nana Maloney yesterday and it was, I did enjoy it, I enjoyed reading it, but it just was not the book I thought it was going to be. I think from the cover and the way it's pitched on the blurb, I thought this would be a bit more like a Judy Bloom book or very much like inside Nana's head, but it's not really about her, <laughs> it's kind of about her and her mum, it's mostly about her mum I feel and um, her mum's friend from university um, who's like dealing with lots of issues as a gay black man and how that is against his Christian beliefs when he was younger and it like jumps between the 90s when they were at university and present day when then is 16 and I just that's not the book I thought it was going to be and I'm not sure who this is for because I thought it was like a YA book but it feels actually way more focused on the adult relationships than really the teenagers. So I don't know, it was it was fine, but it just got a bit confused for me at the end. But still, um, still fun, still fun read. And now I've started reading uh, How to Breathe Underwater by Julie Oranger, which is a short story collection. And they're all quite dark um, so far, but with like aspects of hope in them, it's a bit hard to explain, but they're very, very 
different and varied so far. I'm about halfway through that this morning and I'm gonna go for a run in a minute and then I can listen to a little bit more of Isabella while I'm running, which I am enjoying, but it's quite, um, there's a lot of information coming at me quite fast. So I'm, I'm having to like really pay attention to it, which is like setting the scene of Isabella's life and how she was betrothed to Edward II so far. So it's like a lot of backstory, <laughs> backstory, but you know, context for, uh, for it. So I'm gonna get dressed now. As you can see, I'm still in my pajamas, but I thought you would appreciate um, Will, who is doing a formal Friday today. Um, it's the new thing, it's the new thing. <laughs> so gonna catch on. So we, we've, we've got a jacket, shoes and tie. Yeah. Just for the and, house. And uh, watch and uh, pocket square. I think he looks like he's about to show parents around an American college or something like that. Or maybe like... I believe, of course. Of course. <laughs> It's the pale chinos and the dark jacket. I'm just, just experimenting with different looks now, really. It's Friday night and we've got some Shake Shack which is on delivery for the first time today. Woo. Although Will is furious because they've got our order wrong. <laughs> they got my order wrong. They also you got my order wrong. No, they did get my order wrong as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, did I, I, I didn't have tomato. We asked for Will's burger without tomato but mine came without tomato instead and I think that's a bit disgraceful to be honest. But, oh, I'm so excited. We're going to watch some Ships Creek now and then we're going to watch Emma because um, we saw the most recent film and Will's not read it or didn't know the story so he thought we would like to watch another version so he thought we watched the BBC adaptation with Rom Romola Garai um, which so I'm really in the mood for that actually like a bit of a period drama oh, yes yum 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 going to my mum and dad's house this weekend. So excited, my dad's about to come and collect us and we're gonna be like, having barbecues and roast dinners and um, hopefully still, like, see my nan. I think my nan's coming over, so feeling very happy today. Um, I am, what is the day? It's the 4th, the 4th of July. Um, and I have, I'm about three quarters of the way through this. So I should be nearly four books down by the end of, end of today, but I'm actually one and three quarter books down so I'll probably I'm definitely gonna finish this today so that'll be two books I, I mean we did we, we're not surprised are we that this happened I, like already I'm halfway behind but you know that's that's the nature of these kind of uh, challenges I do have the audiobook going on as well um, so maybe that'll up my numbers a little bit later these stories though I'm really enjoying they're very different but they all seem to center about like young teenagehood or childhood and and like dangers i suppose there's lots of um, different stories that focus on death or like sudden death of family members or, or friends or something like that and it's a lot of it is children kind of dealing with the ramifications of this in various different guises um all of the different family situations are, you know it, it's all very diverse but yeah i've got about three more stories to go so but this is good, it's a good shout. I've also packed some books for my for my mum and dad's house. I'm gonna stay a little bit longer um, than Will and I'm gonna work from there for a few days. I have packed Public Library by Ali Smith. I've taken a play, um, which is Tom Stoppard's Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead, which is one of my favorite plays. I've seen it live and I've seen the film and everything and I have the play, but I've never actually sat and read it. So that'd be good. And the plays are very quick, quick readers. I've also taken Daphnis and Chloe by Longus, which is very short, um, which is like a Greek, ancient Greek myth. 
and oh the Miranda July book the first bad the first bad man I've had that as well and also my Kindle so <laughs> classic optimistic um packing of books all oh, right so you just won't do any to be fair, you can leave some of the clothes you've worn or something, can't you? Dinner. He looks like he's in. Is he moved position, Nobby? I love how much not only has my reading fallen by the wayside but also this vlog <laughs> like after going to my parents I then just stopped <laughs> filming I think fair enough because I just wanted to enjoy a time with them while I was there but then even after we got back I've just been like well really busy at work um for one thing but just haven't really done any filming but that's okay I can rectify that now so since I last vlogged I have read Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead by Thomas Stoppard which is a play from the point of view of these two minor characters in Hamlet so it, it is the play of Hamlet but just all from their point of view and then we get a lot of scenes when they're off stage but it was interesting to read it having seen it performed and you know I think it, it is a little bit pretentious like it, it's very philosophical but there's a point where I'm like okay calm down now Tom but um still very good I've also today just finished Finding Joy which is a gay romance book by Adriana Herrera which I really it was really fun this is just such a nice romance book it's about Desta who's come to Ethiopia with aid USA um, and he's doing some like work there and then he meets this local guy Elias and they obviously fall in love um, and it's just a really nice it's a really nice book. It's full of enough angst that comes with romance. It was just nice and fun and really interesting to learn about Ethiopia, like a place I've never been to, don't know very much about the history there. Um, so it was fun to read a book in that country. And what I also liked was, it was almost like a holiday romance type book, but because they were there doing this project, it's you know they were there for weeks and weeks and the book kind of implied a lot of time going on which i think is nice because you don't want like insta love and then suddenly everybody's in love with, with each other and it's very easy i feel like they had a long time to build up their relationship and also when you're in a different country and you're working really intensely with people on a specific project for a period of time relationships can form very closely very quickly so i thought that was, uh, you know, it was realistic in the sense that romance books can be realistic. And I'm now I'm about to pick up a Public Library by Ali Smith. Um, so that's the next one I'm going to read. Um, and what is it, like the 10th today or something? It's the 10th and I've read four books so far. Like, this is ridiculous. But, you know, I have... I'd say I have the weekend, although we are going to see Will's mum. <laughs> so it's the problem. Social engagements have started coming onto the horizon now. Um, but I will have some time in the next coming weeks. I think this is going to be like a late comeback. Later on in the month, I'll swoop up the numbers suddenly and have read 30 books. So we spent this morning cleaning up the house because Will's mum's coming down to visit. So, you know, make everything spick and span before the mother-in-law arrives. Um, but it's going to be really nice. What we're going to hopefully do um, 
we've been trying to buy a house all through kind of lockdown and um, obviously Will's mum hasn't been able to come and see it or see like where we are hoping to live. Um, so I think we're gonna go around there and kind of show her the area um, and just hang out. So it's gonna be a really nice weekend. Um, this morning I was listening to Isabella by Alison Weir when I was on my run and I'm gonna listen to it a little bit more now while I just do some ironing, but it's okay. I am funny interesting. I'm funny interesting to learn about Isabella and also like Edward II who is um, basically gay and in love with uh, one of his earls and like all the barons were like we hate this man <laughs> um, and he was just the favourite and he lorded it over all of them and they were like you need to get rid of him and it's just it's actually quite interesting very Game of Thronesy. y um, but I am finding it is just a list of facts like the whole book is a bit like on May the 2nd Isabella was here and um, she went from Canterbury back to London via these five towns on May the 5th, May the 6th and I was just like oh okay it's, it, it's just very much like this is exactly what was happening in her life and I'm not really sure what the, who the book is for um, like they're just explaining about the royal household and about all the different people who are in her household as opposed to Edward's and it's just a list of all the people during this like specific time that worked for her and okay that's fine but like why do I need to know that like is it relevant to like it's, I don't feel like at the moment that it's telling a story of her life or really explaining her personality to me sometimes sometimes it does um and especially what was happening with um uh, with Edward and uh all of that was very interesting but it just feels almost like I don't know like a police transcript I almost feel like it's facts that someone could use to then turn this into a film or like to, to, to you could you could paint a story around these facts but that's not what Alison was doing but I am I do want to learn about this so I'm going to keep listening um and see how I get on with it <sighs> library yesterday and it it was okay it's short stories interspersed with different commentaries on what libraries mean to people but the stories themselves weren't like explicitly linked to or about libraries at all but they did have a lot of them had themes in about knowledge like about researching things history poetry and I guess that's the only kind of link I could find um and they were okay. I personally prefer Ali Smith when she's writing long form as opposed to short stories. But I did, um, I, I liked it because I like her writing. And I did really like the way this book focused on poetry because I'm not a big poetry reader myself. But a lot of the characters in these, um, in these short stories are reading and then kind of analysing the poetry as well and talking about what it means to them. So I quite liked that because it was sort of like a helping hand for me to see the beauty in some of these poems. Um, and there's lots of focus on Catherine Mansfield and like her life and letters and things like that. So yeah, it was good. Probably wasn't my favourite Ali Smith, but I enjoyed it. And then this morning I finished, I didn't, I didn't just start this this morning, I put this up last night. But I finished reading The Lonely Londoners by Sam Selvan, which is a, about the Windrush generation in London. It's about lots of different West Indian men who have come to London at various points um, during the 50s and what it's like for them living uh, living in London and it's very, very hard. I really, really enjoyed this and it made me so angry that I didn't really know about it when I was younger. Like I, I've obviously heard of it recently, but to me this isn't an obvious part of like the British literary canon. And I was like, why didn't I do this at school instead of flipping of mice and men which has like no relation to me or my life and like this is so relevant there isn't really a through plot it's more like a series of vignettes about all of these different characters and our guide almost through these different people 
um, is Moses, who's been in London the longest, and is often the point of contact for new people arriving in London um, to help them get set up, find a room. And the narration in this book, it isn't from Moses' perspective, but it sort of feels like it could be, because even though it's written in the third person, it is in a West Indian dialect as it's written. So it feels like Moses is almost your person um, as a reader who's helping you through this landscape, like how he does for the different arrivals in the UK. Um, and you just meet these different characters kind of one by one and you eventually build up this much bigger group picture right at the end and it tackles lots of issues obviously with racism and the struggle for work and poverty and like being part of that working class in London and I really enjoyed it I could so visualize it as I was reading it and I could really imagine this as like a BBC two-parter um, like drama series or something like that I think it would work so well so I have a ballet class later as my last class of of term we've been doing these short online terms and I haven't gone for the last few weeks um, so I'm looking forward to doing that but in the meantime I'm going to start Permission by Saskia Vogel which was sent to me by Dialogue Books and like I'm just so intrigued by this. It's about an actress in LA who gets involved with a dominatrix, but I'm like, I can't decide whether I think this book is gonna be like completely trashy or completely amazing. Um, or I mean, I'm, I'm sure it could be mediocre as well, but let's find out. It's like Echo is a young actress living in the coast of LA, um, grieving for her father who was swept out to sea, obviously. And then she starts relationships with strangers like Orly, a dominatrix who moves in across the street. And it's about, love sex power and loneliness and I'm like okay um, and it's just like the front cover looks so kind of saucy um so I'm going to start that now um then do ballet and then maybe read a little bit more later this evening so I'll, I'll check in then So this evening I was going to film a video and I got myself like all dolled up in the full face of makeup which I don't normally do just for like normal work and then like extremely couldn't be bothered <laughs> so I've just been sitting and reading and watching some telly but my reading has been very successful today so I did finish um, permission I actually read loads of it last night and just uh, polished it off this morning and it's fine like I just don't really know if it was if it said anything at the end of the day. So you have Echo who's an aspiring actress and she goes back and stays with her mum for a bit after her dad dies. Um, and she, she then notices across the street from her mum this woman, Orly, who is a dominatrix and they start a bit of a friendship and then relationship. And we also learn about like Orly, Orly's life, I guess, and like her submissive, Piggy, who like lives with her. And then you kind of see Echo kind of dealing with her own grief and just working out her own self-worth. I just don't really know what it was trying to say at the end of the day. I think it was trying to put like BDSM stuff and dominatrix type stuff and pain and sex and like move that all together somehow. And I guess make a point about that and grief. I, I, I don't know, but I think it didn't really peak in the way I wanted it to, like towards the end. I didn't think I understood the characters enough for me to really care or understand. Like I felt like they kind of just started doing things and I was like, but do you really want this though? Cause I don't really, I don't think the groundwork has been set for me to appreciate why you're doing this. Um, so it's just a bit sloppy, I think is how I felt or perhaps it, it felt like the book was trying to be a little bit more than it actually was but it was fine it read extremely quickly as i've said so i've picked up today the first bad man by miranda july and i'm already like halfway through it 
so I started it a bit this morning, a bit at lunch, and then I've been reading quite a lot this evening. And it's weird, because this is very much about kind of violence and sex as well, but way, way better. If you've not read Miranda July before, or you've not seen some of her films, her characters always seem to suffer like an extreme, almost absurd form of social anxiety. And reading this book in particular, I was reminded of Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine if you read that book. I had many problems with that book, but I did quite like the voice of Eleanor. And Cheryl in this book is, is sort of sim similar, someone who's really struggling socially and kind of creates all these little rules for herself but she's also kind of suffering all kinds of misunderstandings in in her relations to people which can be quite humorous but often in a very dark way so this book is about her obsession with an older man at her work um, which then gets overtaken by um to her boss's daughter who comes to stay with her and is incredibly rude. And then they find themselves in this situation where they start fighting each other, but it almost becomes like an like a contract, like an understanding that they really both get something from the physical fight. So it's really similar to permission. Um, although this kind of thing being explored in a much more interesting and better written way, in my opinion. Um, so it's, it's going into very, weird ground now and Cheryl is really struggling with boundaries I think like social boundaries but also like sexual boundaries um in just in her relationship with with various people in her life but I'm really enjoying it and I'm gonna keep reading it I think this evening and hopefully finish and I'm also gonna finish the vlog here because it is the 15th of July today so that is bang in the middle of my 30 day challenge <laughs> and if I finish the Miranda July, then I've finished eight books, um, which is not 15, but you know, it's over halfway. And I'm also halfway through my audiobook as well, which, um, you know, so that's okay. I think you should stay tuned for the second vlog, which will be the surprise finish when I somehow overtake myself and read a million books. And I truly believe that will happen. Let me know in the comments what kind of vlogs you actually like to watch because I do enjoy doing reading challenges because I think it helps me focus my mind and it makes me read books a la Miranda July, which I maybe have forgotten that I own um, rather than just reading the most recent books I've bought. So I find it quite helpful in that way. But I also personally, I think much prefer to vlog over like a weekend or one day and make that day really detailed. Um, I just feel like I can tell a better story from a vlog perspective that way rather than if I'm vlogging over numerous days. Um, so I'd love to know what type of things you normally like to watch or if you don't have a preference, which is fine. And um, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.